Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bourbon Bar. I'm Holden and today I'm going to be doing a review of three whiskeys that I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. And honestly, I know a lot of you guys who watch my channel have been looking forward to these reviews as well. So I'm not going to dilly dally. I am going to jump right into it. And the three whiskeys that we are reviewing today are going to be the three main Redwood Empire lineup, all in cask strength, batch one. Now, this is Redwood Empire. Many of you guys know them, many of you guys may not. They are a company coming out of California um, by the Redwood Forest, and what they do is every single bottle bought, they plant one tree because uh, to help with reforestation. So you all will know that your money is going in a good place, and I think that's something super cool that Redwood Empire does. Many of you guys may have watched my video of Redwood Empire Grizzly Beast. I reviewed this one last year sometime. This is their uh, limited release that they put out every year, and uh, I thought it was really good, and I was really excited about Redwood Empire, and now they've come out with their cask strengths, so I'm even more excited to get into those and tell you guys how those are, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But before we get into this video, please go down and hit the like button, and if you're not subscribed, please do, because I'm trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and only you guys can help me out with that, so please hit the subscribe button, and we'll get right into the video. So everybody, for those of you who don't know, the three main core lineups from Redwood Empire are the Pipe Dream, which will be shown up on the screen here. This is their bourbon that is aged at least four years and has a four grain mash bill. Um, we will also be drinking their Emerald Giant. That is their rye, their rye whiskey that they also age about four years. Um, and finally, we will be drinking the two of them combined, which is a lot of people's favorite, and that is going to be the Lost Monarch. Lost Monarch is probably one of the most um, the popular bottles coming out of Redwood Empire at 90 proof that is like one of the bottles that everyone has and talks about from Red Empire it almost put them on the map I would say so those are the three that we're gonna be reviewing today and yeah we're gonna pour them in the glasses and get right into them so I'm gonna be putting the Lost Monarch in the glass on the right side we'll be getting to that last we'll be doing Emerald Giant second that will be going in the glass in the middle and we are going to do Pipe Dream first, that is gonna be the glass on the left hand side. Now I'm not doing these blind because uh, this is a review and I wanna just let you guys know how I feel about them. I've had them once on the live stream, if you guys watched then you would know that, but uh, this is just kind of a more in-depth review on what I think about these bottles. All right everybody, starting with bottle number one, this is Pipe Dream, their bourbon whiskey. This comes in at 116.8 proof, that is 58.4% alcohol. The mash bill for this bottle is 74% corn, 20% rye, 4.5% malted barley, and 1.5% wheat. That 1.5% wheat may be minuscule, but that is enough to create this four grain whiskey, which honestly, I like four grains, so I'm really looking forward to this. And yeah, this is distilled in um, California, Kentucky, and Indiana, so has some of their own distillate, some of uh, MGP's distillate, I'm guessing, and then a different Kentucky distillery's uh, distillate, which they sourced. So yeah, um, that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get right in on the nose on the Redwood Empire Pipe Dream Cask Strength Batch 1. Mm, okay. Okay, so right away, I'm noticing this like confectioner, sweet confectioner sugar. Um, it's like, honestly powdered sugar on on the nose but it also has like this nice caramel and a, like a fruit zestiness it's literally like almost like an orange peelish or maybe on the lemon peel end of things like almost a little bit more sour than orange peel but it is like this nice fruit zestiness which is coming across nice and it's definitely playing well with that um confectioner sugar that i'm getting on the nose I am maybe getting a little bit of a raspberry in here too. Not a whole lot, maybe it's just a hint of raspberry, along with a little bit of alcohol. Definitely the proof is coming through on the nose here. Um, but this is my first whiskey of the day, so that could just be playing a part in that proofiness. It has a decent amount of oak presence in there. It's not super oaky by any means, but it smells fantastic. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get it on the palate. Okay, it's still going, still going. Okay, 
that is that is a roller coaster. So starting off right away on the palate, it hit my tongue and I'm like, wow, this one is sweet. That confectioner sugar is definitely coming through on the nose. Uh, and then once it was in my mouth, I'm like, it kind of found this, um, that fruit zestiness mixed with like a little bit of like that oak spiciness and a little bit of like oakiness. Um, but then by the time I swallowed it, I was getting some nice leathery undertones. Uh, it's not super high in age, so it's not super leathery, but there was a nice amount of leather that was there that was present um, in the glass. So that really went well. Um, and a little bit more of that like lemon zest was on the finish there. I also, uh, I think I might've gotten a little bit of a nutty note, but I'm gonna go in for a second sip and let you guys know for sure uh, what I was tasting. Okay, so second sip, that caramel turned into a butterscotch and I think I am getting like a, a fattier nut here. Um, maybe in terms of like a cashew or a walk, no, not a cashew, those are, aren't dry enough. Maybe like a walnut, like almost like a walnut um, or a pecan maybe, something along those lines. But uh, not a whole lot of it, just like a little bit. Um, but it is, it's really good. The mouthfeel of this um, is nice and coating as you would expect coming from a cask strength bourbon. But the foregrain of this, um, I think is probably what's offering that like, that lemon zestiness. This is uh, kind of got a similar palette to the Grizzly Beast that I reviewed um, recently, which you guys can click the link and watch that video if you want. But uh, this is a significantly higher proof at 116.8. So overall, it's really good. And uh, yeah, it's giving me high hopes for these second two bottles. It is a super sweet on the, on the up front and then on the finish, it's like the complete opposite. It has like that, like some of those darker, um notes to it as well so overall quite the experience very good bourbon super excited about that on to glass number two here and in glass number two we have the emerald giant that is their rye whiskey this bad boy comes in at 116.4 proof that is only 0.4 proof points lower than the bourbon um that comes out to 58.2 percent alcohol and the mash bill of their rye is 94 percent rye five percent malted barley and one percent wheat so um, I haven't had a whole lot of ryes that have wheat in the mash bill, but it is definitely interesting to see that they have put wheat in the mash bill. It's almost a 95.5 rye, the only difference being that um, the 5% is malted barley, not malted rye, and then uh, the 1% is the wheat. Right away on the nose, I'm gonna get this rye under my eye. Okay, so wow. That smells, that smells, that smells good. I'm not a huge rye guy, as many of you guys know. But it seems like there's a decent amount going on in here. It's definitely giving me this, like, um, black tea vibe. It's definitely herbaceous. But at the same time, it kind of has, like, some sweet stuff with it. Like, a nice licorice-y undertone. Not, like, black licorice, but maybe I'm closer to, like, a, a red licorice-esque to it. It also definitely has a lot of that rye spice in there. It almost has like a rye bready note um, coming out of the nose here as well. But overall, it smells fantastic. It definitely smells like a rye. I actually have never had a cask strength rye before this bottle, so I'm interested to see what it has to offer coming from you know a cask strength version of the bottle. And this is at least four years old and um, also has some of their own distillate, some MGP and some Kentucky distillate in there as well. So we are gonna go ahead and get this one on the palate. Okay. Ooh. So, on the front of the palate there, interesting, on the front of the palate, so that herbaceousness from the nose comes through on the front, but then um, in the mid palette, I do get a little bit of like a, a mintiness in there. Um, not like a whole lot of mintiness, but I do get like just a little bit of mint um, coming through on the mid palette. But then by the finish, we got lots of that um, rye spice in there coming through and almost a little bit of like an oaky presence in this, which is nice to see in a rye. And honestly, for like, as far as ryes go, this is a pretty significantly dark one. I don't know how well you guys can see that. 
but um, all these bottles have some significantly dark liquid in it, so uh, you can already know that it's gonna be a good whiskey when it's this dark, so. Getting uh, my second sip here. Okay, huh. So I am getting like a little bit of like a light fruit in there as well, maybe like a pear ask or like a green apple skin um but it definitely is like very rye forward whiskey i mean if you guys like if you guys like rye or you just like um that category of like high rye things low rye things just a rye category this is a great one this one is definitely for rye lovers um it definitely has all those right aspects that you love it also has some nice spice in the finish um it leaves a nice warm kentucky hug all the way down coming at 116.4 proof is what you would expect so it is really good though um comparing it to the bourbon and back and forth between the bourbon and the rye it's um it's definitely more herbaceous it's definitely um less of that sweet uh zesty fruit zestiness and more of like the clove and you know black tea aspects coming from the rye but overall it is really good and I just got a big whiff of cinnamon in there as well so um like a nice cinnamon though like a desserty cinnamon it's not like harsh or anything it's not like red hots or anything like that so uh overall this rye very very good um now I'm interested to see what they taste like together in their burr rye so the last one we're going to be drinking here is uh Redwood Empire's Lost Monarch one like I said earlier one of the biggest names coming from Red Oat Empire. Their core line, Lost Monarch, is one of the Whiskey Tube's favorite bottles to review and talk about. Um, and this is their cast strength version of that, so we only hope, can hope that it's gonna be as good. Uh, the proof of this bottle is 117.2 proof, so that is higher than both of these two, but only 0.4 proof points higher than the bourbon. Um, the ABV of this is 58.6%, and the mash bill of this one uh, or sorry, the blend of this one, not mash bill. So the ma it is these two mash bills that are blended together, but it is 55% straight rye. So it's 55% this rye and it is 45% straight bourbon, which is this one. And then this one is only aged uh, at least three years. So there's some three-year-old whiskey in here. It could have stuff older than that, but it's at least three years. So um, yeah, this is a boo rye or a burr rye. However you guys want to say it, that is what it is. And uh, this is one of my first burr rides that I've ever had. I have mixed turkey 101 rye and bourbon and made the turkey 202, um, but that was on homemade burr rye and I liked it. Uh, but this is my first time drinking and having a, not only a burr rye from like the bottle, but also a burr rye at cast strength. So I'm excited to see, especially since coming off of tasting these two, excited to see what they can do together. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one right on the nose. Oh, that smells fantastic. It's like, it's like I'm definitely getting the zest coming from the bourbon on this, but at the same time, that like black tea-ish note that I'm getting um, from the rye, that herbaceousness is there. It also has that like sweet caramel coming from um, kind of like both of these. This one maybe being more butterscotch, this one being caramel, but it comes across as a really nice thick sweet caramel. Um, I almost got like a little bit of like a, it's gonna sound weird and maybe it's just cause I've been eating it a lot recently, but like a candy corn note on it, very mild candy corn, mind you. But it's like candy corn has kind of got a marshmallowy taste and that's what it is. Um, but yeah, I think like somewhere deep on the nose, I get like just a hint of candy corn. It's not like, if you guys don't like candy corn, this isn't gonna turn you off because it's not a lot. Uh, you really have to dig for it, but it, I think I just barely get it in there which is weird, but welcoming. Uh, also, you might want to call it marshmallow, like a toasted marshmallow. But like t for me, since I've just been eating candy corn recently, uh, it's coming across to me as like a little bit of a, like a candy corn on the nose. I also want to say this might have like a little bit of like a pastriness, like a cinnamon rolliness. Um, I think that wheat um, mixed between with the two of these, uh, it's giving me a little bit of like a bready note, but also that cinnamon spice um, that uh, is also in the rye and just a little bit on the finish of the bourbon. Like um, it's kind of coming through together and coming through as like almost like a cinnamon roll, like a Cinnabon, but it smells fantastic. I can't wait to get into it and we're gonna get it on the palate. Huh. 
Interesting. You know, that's, that's pretty good. I think, I think that's hard. That's a hard one to explain. So it's sweet up front on the front of the palate. It's sweet and it's like the sugar from the bourbon coming through. But at the same time, it definitely has like a little bit of like florally aspect to it. Um, not perfumey by any means, but just a little bit like earthy and floral, but like in a sweet way. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. Coming back on the nose now, I'm definitely getting like a nice bouquet of flowers though. Um, this one probably doesn't smell the most ethanol out of all of these. Um, this one definitely doesn't, the ethanol isn't coming across in the nose as much, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get another sip so I can give you guys a real in-depth dive of what this one tastes like. Okay, yeah, so that's, it's honestly the nose, I'm really liking the nose, the palette uh, is kind of a roller coaster for me. I'm not entirely sure if I love it or hate, I don't hate it, I know that much, but if I love it or if it's only okay, um, but it is like sweet up front and then like it's herbaceous in the middle and then you swallow it and you get like some of that sweetness again, but you get less of that spice that was coming through um, on the rye and maybe even a little bit on the bourbon. And it's like the spice went away from it, which is something I actually liked in both of both the rye and the bourbon. Um, but we're gonna go one more sip on this and try, try to get you guys some good, decent notes so you guys can understand what it tastes like. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, there's just not a whole lot going on in this. Um, the caramels died down a little bit. Um, maybe you want to get back into like the fruity aspects of it. Um, honestly, there's almost like a stone fruit in there as well, like on the palate there. Um, not a whole lot of it, but there's like a little bit of like a stone fruit, a, a light stone fruit maybe, like um, a pear. It's a pear technically a stone fruit, I don't know. Um, or maybe like um, a mango or something. But like, it's just, it's not quite as complex as the bourbon and the rye which is odd because putting them together, you would think it would make it more complex. Um, you know, I on my live stream the other night, I had said that I liked uh, the bourbon first, the burai second, burai second, and then um, the rye last. But my opinion might change now that I'm going in, in depth with this. Now, before we get to the grading portion, I'm gonna go through and taste these one last time. And while I'm doing that, you guys are gonna go ahead and listen to a message from today's sponsor. Hey everybody, I'm Rich Baller Holden, and what Rich Baller Holden does on his Friday nights off is he goes to his friend's house and he plays poker. And while he's stealing all of his friend's money, he does have to look his best. And why I'm talking to a third person, I'm not entirely sure. But what I do need to tell you guys is that part of the thing that helps me look professional and, you know, rich, like I'm ballin', uh, is actually a company called Wrist Mafia. Many of you guys may have heard of Wrist Mafia and one of my many ads for them, but honestly, like, if I'm balling on a budget, I'm doing it with Wrist Mafia. So I wear watches from Wrist Mafia to complete every outfit I own, but when I'm playing poker on Friday nights, I really want my friends to know who's the boss. And one of the things that does that is having ice on your wrist. And while it may not be real ice, guys, these watches do set you apart from your competition. Now, if you guys don't know what Wrist Mafia is, it is a subscription-based company where you guys pay just $40 a month, and they will send a watch to your doorstep every single month uh, that is worth a hundred dollars or more and if you guys aren't watch lovers yourself but maybe you know someone who is you can get three or six month subscription boxes where for every three or six months you can get a watch sent to your buddy's door every month for three or six months on your dime and that's like a perfect christmas gift which i know is coming up soon guys um so that being said, guys, check out Wrist Mafia, and honestly, guys, they make great watches. I Like I said earlier, I love showing these off, and I have countless people come up to me and ask me where I get my watches from, and I love telling them that I get them from Wrist Mafia. But if you guys are interested in checking out Wrist Mafia and what they have to offer, click the link in my description. Also, I have a coupon code. It is Bourbon Bar, all one word, all caps, and that'll save you 30% off at your first order at the checkout, so please Use my code, click the link, check out Wrist Mafia, and join the Mafia today. All right, everybody, I'm back, and I went through these glasses one last time, and it actually came right down to the wire between the bourbon and the rye, the Emerald Giant and the Pipe Dream. Guys, um, these two are really close for me, and I 
don't really like rye that often, or I don't typically like them as much as bourbons. So the fact that this one could almost edge out, almost edge out this one is amazing to me. I think the bourbon still has it just by a hair, but these two are definitely very close um, in points for me. And then the last place is still gonna be the Buride, the Lost Monarch. Unfortunately, I think the palette just had a little bit that it left on the table, and I think it could have been just a little bit better. But you all know how the grading system works. We're gonna do a grade on the nose, grade on the palette, and value for the money, and that's gonna equal total score for these whiskeys, all out of 10. So um, so that being said, we are starting with uh, the bourbon. Uh, on the nose, the bourbon smells fantastic, especially if you guys like lemon zest. Um, so on the nose, I'd have to say this one definitely gets like an 8.7 out of 10. And on the palette here, guys, uh, it is a roller coaster of a palette. Starting from start to finish, it has a complete change. However, it is does have a little bit of like a funk to it. Um, I would say the palette deserves an 8.3 out of 10. But I'm gonna have to give it a 7.2 out of 10 for the value for the money. Uh, because just at this price point, you would expect something. Um, Elijah Craig is obviously gonna be a 10, and then, um, you know, like, obviously there's Rare Breed Bourbon, and that's like cast strength, and it's lower in money. So it's hard to put this one at $70 close to that 10. So it uh, is getting a 7.3 out of 10 on the value for the money. Overall, the Pipe Dream Bourbon Cask Strength Batch 1 gets an 8.1 out of 10 for me. For the rye guys, the rye is very special because I am not typically a rye drinker as much as I love bourbon, um, but this rye was fantastic. So on the nose of this rye, it's very herbaceous and rye forward, but I am gonna have to give it an 8.1 out of 10. On the palette of this one, however, I do think it's really great. I think it's like full bodied and has a lot of flavor and even flavors that I really enjoy. So on the palette, I am gonna have to give it an 8.3 out of 10. And finally, you guys, value for the money. Like I said, these are all $70, but compared to the bourbon, I, I expect a lot more from bourbons but in terms of cast strength rise i actually think this is quite a good deal um and i really like it for the money so i'm gonna have to give it a 7.8 out of 10. so the overall score of this one is going to be an 8.066666 which actually rounds up to 8.1 just to show you guys how close uh, i scored these two together but the bourbon does just barely edge out the rye but an 8.1 rounding up out of 10 is what i give the emerald giant Last but not least, guys, we have the Redwood Empire Lost Monarch. This is their Burr Rye, which everyone loved in um, the normal mainstay. And uh, I gotta say, I was just slightly disappointed with the cast strength of this one. Not because um, I didn't like it, but just because, you know, the mainstay was so much more popular. But on the nose of this one, I have to say it was really pleasant. I would have to give the nose an 8.5. 4 out of 10. However, when I moved into the palette of this one, it just seemed like it left a lot to be desired. Um, I think it just could have been a lot better, and I'm going to have to give it a 7.1 out of 10. And finally, value for the money, $70 for this one, like the other ones. Um, it's good. I don't know if I would be seeking it out to buy it again, but it is a decent whiskey. So I am just gonna have to give it a 7.1 out of 10. Overall, the Lost Monarch scores a 7.5 out of 10. So out of the three of these, these two very close together, but the Pipe Dream Bourbon came out on top, the Emerald Giant Rye came out in second, and the Lost Monarch came in last, unfortunately. However, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed sitting here and drinking all these because no matter what, guys, these are great whiskeys. If you can see them on the shelf, definitely pick them up, uh, especially these two. Um, maybe don't pick this one up if you're such a huge fan of the uh, of the mainstay because I don't want you to be disappointed. But maybe do pick it up if, if you are a fan of the mainstay because, like I said, it still is good. It just leaves a little bit left to be desired on the palette of this one. But guys, that's the end of the video. Please leave a comment in the comment section if you have had any of these. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on what you think of them, especially this one. I think this one might be a, one of the more controversial ones, seeing as it's a crowd favorite in the mainstay. Um, but I'd love to hear what you guys think about all three of them. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Only you guys can help me get there, so please hit the subscribe button. Also, like the video. That helps me out a ton, especially with exposure, which helps me get to that thousand subscriber mark. However, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next class.